A committee for the No campaign against the Indigenous voice to Parliament has launched today. It comes in the form of a press release with a few details, a couple of pages, but no questions uh, from the media in terms of a media conference. But even so, this body warns that it will forever change the way Australia is governed. A committee comprised of former and current MPs and Indigenous figures will argue that the voice will fail to improve the results and lives of Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders. Joining me live now is the Nationals leader, David Littleproud, who is also against uh, the voice to Parliament. David Littleproud, thanks so much for your time. Are you linked with this no campaign? No, uh, the National Party isn't linked. While there are former leaders of the National Party that are part of it and a member of our current party room that's obviously part of the, the No Committee, uh, our party room made an individual uh, stand, uh, member by member, uh, around where we believed uh, this piece of legislation uh, should stand in, in terms of our support. And we failed to be able to get to a juncture where we could support it because we've been down this path before this path of representative bodies that have failed to close the gap. It'll add another layer of bureaucracy. That's all it'll do. Uh, and while it might work in Redfern, it won't work in the remote areas that a uh, few of these Indigenous Australians will have to come to Canberra to represent, representing over hundreds of thousands of square kilometres. Hundreds of different communities have different challenges and opportunities that need to be fixed. Mm. Uh, it's just, it's, we've tried it before, it hasn't worked. So we're, there's no what malice we in what we we've come We have never tried a voice to, to Parliament. We've not tried a voice to Parliament. That's the whole point, isn't it? We've had a representative body. No, 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 we've had a representative body. Sure. Uh, a representative body that was elected. Uh, and that's the issue that we have. We have a representative body before. Uh, it didn't work. It didn't close the gap, particularly in regional and remote areas. And that's where most disadvantage is. So there's no malice in where the nationals have got to. But we look at this through a, a different lens to the rest of the, of the country because we actually yeah. live it and we experience it every day. Uh, and I think that's important that Australians understand that the nationals uh, are taking a practical stand about how do we close the gap. And that's, I think, the most important thing that we should be aiming for. And we should have ambitious goals about when okay. and how do we close the gap, by what date. Uh, and, and making sure that we're honest with ourselves about achieving that. Well, nothing has worked so far. The gap hasn't closed, and we're talking about decades and billions upon billions of dollars thrown at this issue. I want to get back to this no campaign that's been uh, launched today. Uh, what do you disagree with with this campaign that you're not linked to? Uh, well, we don't believe that a representative body will close the gap. It's as simple as that. Oh, no, sorry, the, the no campaign. Forward, so it? I'm talking about the issues that have been raised oh, by Jacinta Price and Warren Mundine. What do you disagree with that they've put forward? Well, well, well nothing, but I, I'm not uh, getting to the level of involvement mm -hmm. that uh, Jacinta Price and others are, but they have our strong support. Our party room has made that decision, uh, each one individually, about their own position on this. And so we'll continue to make sure that our position is clear, uh, but we support and, re and hope that this is a respectful conversation that the country should have and the right environment's yeah. created where it's not personal, that it's actually about... A a contest of ideas, and that's where uh, we'll simply continue to prosecute our case as the National Party, uh, and the No and Yes committees can do what they like, but the Nationals are fiercely independent. Yep. They're independent of any other organisation. OK. One of the issues raised in this um, No Campaign coalition, let's call them, is that it will fundamentally change the way Australia is governed. They also say, you know, it shouldn't be based in race. They say if Indigenous people were to be recognised um, in the Constitution, they want to do it in a separate way. They think migrants should as well. Now, Warren Mundine, in an interview, uh, was asked about whether this was just kind of designed to, to make the whole thing fail. Do you think migrants should be recognised in the Constitution if Indigenous Australians are? Oh, look, I think we've got to be careful with this if we're going to change the preamble. And I think if that was the question, and I can't speak for the party room because that's not the question that's been put to us, but if the question was to acknowledge that Indigenous Australians were here first and that we're better together as a nation, then I think uh, that our party room would come to a position of support more broadly. But that hasn't been put to us, and, and, I, and I couldn't preempt what the party room would get to if that was the question. But I think we need to be careful about the, 
the issues that are at play here. There are two issues. If you want constitutional recognition in the preamble, that hasn't been put to us. If it's about uh, creating a body uh, that's about closing the gap, that's where we have uh, a, a real disagreement with because we've done it before and it's failed before. More bureaucracy is not the answer. Better bureaucracy is the answer. What do you think about what's going on in Alice Springs, uh, Townsville, many unreported places like Tennant Creek where you do see this increased levels of, of violence, domestic violence. And, you know, many people in Alice Springs say it's actually been going on, on for three years. You say all these things that have, have been tried. We hear from Linda Burney. She believes, you know, if there's, if there's more ownership, Indigenous people are recognised in the Constitution, it would change things. I mean, when you look at what's going in Alice Springs, do you, so some part of you, David Littleproud, just think, well, surely we could just try it. The world wouldn't fall in. Well, surely... Well, let me just say that the, the best way to fix this is better bureaucracy and not having bureaucrats in Canberra uh, to reinstate the grog bans, to reinstate the cashless debit card. Uh, some tough loves required. Uh, and while the Labor Party have removed all these policies that we put in place that was to minimise harm uh, because they wanted to give dignity back to those people that couldn't go and buy grog, what about the dignity of women and children? that have been victims of domestic violence. There are social issues there that need to be fixed oh. and there needs to be economic empowerment. And, and, and what we believe is, is that this can be done very quickly uh, and, and with government departments and prime minister and those that have the, the political leadership mm -hmm. to be out and the decision makers to be out and to make sure that there are bespoke models for Alice Springs as there should be for Carnarvon, who, where I was only about six or eight months ago. Mm -hmm. uh, and I see the president, the shy president today asking for the prime minister to go up there. Their issue are real as well, but the solution for Carnarvon will be different to that of Alice Springs. Uh, and to ask one or two Indigenous Australians to be all over that, that part of the world, thousands, hundreds of thousands of square kilometres that have different solutions and be able to come up with and create bespoke uh, solutions to it, it, it just simply can't work. You simply need to have these bureaucrats out on the ground and have the courage and conviction to follow through uh, with policies that, while might impinge on a few's uh, rights, uh, mm -hmm. for the greater good, for the safety of children, uh, you have to have the courage to make those decisions, that are protecting the dignity of all rather than just a few. You talk about the bureaucrats being based in Canberra, but there being no little, little detail. I mean, you're pretending that a voice would see more bureaucrats uh, in Canberra. I mean, that's just not right. No, I'm not. No, that's not what I'm saying at all. No, and I'm not saying that at all. That's not right what I'm saying. I'm saying is that the bureaucracy that we have at the moment mm. uh, is, is sitting in Canberra and you can't get a lens on the real world by living in a city. Well, what was uh, the Uluru statement the from the heart? Were they bureaucrats sitting in Canberra? No, but that wasn't all of Indigenous Australians making those representations. You okay, but to how do you get that, David Little Power? Between... Because you seem to be setting standards that can never be achieved. You know that Indigenous people aren't one homogenous group; they don't all agree. The Uluru statement yeah. from the heart is probably the closest we're going to we're going to get for, to that. And there was disagreement within that. But that's you know a democracy within our Indigenous population. What's wrong with that? Exactly. And so I have a right. And so I have a right as one of the 227 voices to the Australian Parliament, not just for Indigenous Australians, but for every Australian. That's the premise of our great country, is that we're all equal. But when there is disadvantage, the government steps in and it, it fixes that disadvantage. It hasn't. That's the greatness it about this country. It just hasn't, though, about, for but, decades. No. Not government well, on your to, side, yeah, with, not, not your side. You had 10 years well, with to respect, do it just no, recently. No, no, well, and then for the last 50, 60, well, 100 years hasn't improved. Sorry, Laura, but with respect, $5.3 billion put into a procurement program to create mm. economic empowerment for Indigenous businesses. 97% of Indigenous children now go to kindergarten. These are the dials that have been shifted. So let's not talk down ourselves too much. There are problems that need to be fixed yeah. and they can be fixed with bespoke solutions. And so that's what we're saying. So to sit here and to say that we haven't progressed, I think misrepresents where this country has come from, mm. the real intent about fixing these problems, and there is genuine intent to do it. But to put in another representative body will not do that. But by making sure that you have bespoke solutions to Carnarvon, as it needs to be in what air. And that community should be there, not one or two voices, but the community should tell uh, the bureaucrats and the politicians about what are the programs that will shift the dial. And with that comes mutual responsibility because yeah. nobody, no Australian, no matter their creed, 
has, has the right to Australian taxpayers' money. It is a privilege. And that privilege should come with mutual responsibility about making sure that there is food on the table for your children and they go to school. Mm. And if you can't do that, then the government needs to step in with things like the cashless debit card, making sure that there are sound foundations around their families to be able to live happily and to give them the opportunity of hope into the future. That's what the Nationals believe in, practical, common-sense solutions, not ideology. Now, we believe, and if the question was put to us, mm. should we give constitutional recognition, that's a different question to what's been put to us at the moment. So we live and breathe this. So while the commentariat looked down their nose at the nationals, how many of them have lived in these communities? How many of them represent these communities? How many of them have actually stepped outside a capital city before they condemn us? We're the ones that are left with the consequences of this. And we are genuinely about trying to shift this and to close the gap. Yeah. That's the genuine intent that nationals have come from. And we have lived experience from it. We have practical experience. We have common sense to take to Canberra and to make sure that bureaucrats work better. We've achieved a lot, but there's a lot more we can do. But with that comes mutual responsibility from everybody. Yeah, absolutely. Well said, David Little Proud. We talk to you about this every week. We're going to continue to uh, do so. Um, certainly a lot of passion on both sides. Speak to you soon. Thanks.